yeah guys we are back on the draft league scene it's my first time playing draft league in half a year first time playing singles in half a year actually as you may know since scarlet and violet came out i've been all about vgc doubles but we are getting back into singles where i feel i belong so yeah first time playing draft league in singles for half a year we are stepping back into the PWC. Um, I took last season off, and I, I regret that decision, actually. Um, I was just busy with uh, doubles, and I thought I was going to start season 12 of my draft league, and that never happened. So I got invited back into the PWC, and I'm very happy. I regret missing out on season 7, but we are back in season 8, and... We are ready to rock and roll, so we got to shake off rust. I got to get back into singles. I have not played in half a year, so we'll see how this goes. But yeah, this will be my 15th draft league season overall. So um, yeah, out of 15 seasons, we've only missed playoffs three times. And two of those times have been the PWC. The two seasons I've been with these guys, they've bounced me from playoff con contention. Although, um, I barely missed playoffs both times, but that's my goal. I finally want to make the playoffs here, um, in this league. These guys, they, they're really good. They're really good. I give them props. I acknowledge each and every battle, each and every manager. They're, they're tough cookies. So, um, I have my work cut out for me, but we're going to shake off our rust and try hard to make playoffs finally. Um. But before I give you guys a quick rundown of the rules, let me take a moment to um, give a very big thank you to the admin team. These guys run a draft league much better than I did, much better than I can. Um, oh my goodness, man. Uh, much thanks to the admin team. Tranel, first and foremost, for inviting me back personally. Uh, Brad Pudding Official, we played him before, I think in Season 5. He's doing a lot of work. Um, and the other two admins, guys, we actually have them in my division. So, <laughs> so I'm pretty damn scared if I have to play them. Um, but anyways, big shout to Gil. Gil's, um, Gil's in my division. And our very own Layton. You guys know Layton from my league. I actually... Took him from this league and uh, brought him over to NGC. And to this day, I still haven't beat him in the draft league battle. I think I'm 0-2 against him. So um, if we end up playing each other in the playoffs, I hope to change that. He has my number. He has my number. So I need to beat that guy eventually. So anyways, really quick. Thank you, Trinnell. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Gil. Thank you, Layton. Um, you guys are very much appreciated. You guys put in superb work running this league. I, I'm astonished the work that goes into this. Um, every time there's a replay, a um, they instantly update like four plus different documents. It's amazing the kind of effort they they put. So big shout out to those guys. Uh, I mean it, man. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's amazing what they do, the teamwork they put together, and the effort they put into it, man. They really need to get paid for this. So, uh, my method of payment is linking the PWC channel in this YouTube um, video's description, and also I'm going to link their Discord. Um, if you guys want to join a future season, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm going to link their Discord. Um, join and try to apply for a future season. I re heavily recommend it. Um, regardless of what skill level you are, as I'm about to explain, they have different divisions, um, all different difficulty levels. So really quickly, the rundown for Season 8 is very similar to previous seasons. Maybe some minor changes I'm about to go into, but... Um, first off, for the PWC in general, there are now three different showdown divisions. We have the Typhlosion League, Typhlosion Division, which is like the elite, the hardest 
um, the hardest competition in this league. We have the, the Dark Tricks division where, where I'm at. It's medium. And um, a little spoiler alert, the Prince Otto has joined me. So he's in this division too. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Both me and the Prince Otto are in Dark Tricks, which is the medium, medium difficulty. And then we have, I believe, the Oshawa division, which is, um, I don't want to say the easiest division, but re relatively speaking, it is. And then, for the first time ever, from my understanding, they are doing Wi-Fi, two Wi-Fi divisions. I believe it, the Diamond and Pearl division. I could be wrong with what, um, with what they're called, but... They have two Wi-Fi divisions, but I like to keep it. I'm a very busy person, so I'm just going to keep staying showdown. I have the game, but I don't want to go through, you know, like breeding and genning Pokemon. Maybe someday, but right now I'm just too busy working mornings and um, I hardly have time to play showdown. But yeah, yeah, five different divisions, man. Um, And these guys... These this, this admin team they are monsters. They update documents like on the fly, like on the spot. I'm very impressed, man. <laughs> they are monsters. I don't know how they do it, but uh, goodness. Um, uh, but anyways, we're in the Dark Tricks division. Uh, medium difficulty, for lack of better term. Um, singles, singles draft league, of course. Best of one draft league format. Uh, Pokemon Showdown. In our Dark Tricks division, we have 16 managers. We don't play everyone. Um, we don't play everyone. So my season, we we actually hold on. We, it's actually an eight-week season, from my understanding. I'm gonna do eight different weeks, but we don't play everyone. So it turns out I'm not playing Layton, and I'm not playing the Prince Auto, according to my schedule. So. Um, we might play them if we make the playoffs, but we have to get there first, man. I'm yet, I've yet to make playoffs in the PWC, so that's my goal. I want to change that fact now. I want to change that now. So, anyways, um, each manager drafts 11 Pokemon. We did our draft a week ago, so um, I will reveal the team shortly. But yeah, we have 11 Pokemon. Um, you must draft at least one Pokemon from each tier. There's a tiering system, um, system pretty much, um, similar to previous seasons. I'm not going to go into it, but yeah, you, there was like, you could draft two S tier, two A tier, three B tier, and, uh, so on and so on. So there's a S, a A, a B, a C, a D, and an E tier, and you must grab at least one Pokemon from each tier. So... Um, once again, you have restricted moves. Uh, the shutdown divisions are a little different from Wi-Fi divisions, but, um, key examples are there's definitely, definitely no pursuit allowed, unfortunately. <laughs> I like my pursuit, but I gotta follow the rules here, guys. Um, there is no hidden power and, um, just any cut moves. If it's not in... Gen the Generation 9 games, like, if the moves straight out cut out of the game, is not allowed in Showdown either. So, and there are no item restrictions. Um, last time I played with these guys was Season 6, and I believe that they did this change in between then. Because the last time I played, there, um, there was slight item restrictions, you know? You could only have, like, two of an item you can only have two choice scarf pokemon for example so this time around there are no item restrictions i could run six scarfers if i want to so and last but not least guys i mean um we still have a signature pokemon our team captain but it's a little different this time thanks to the new generation this signature pokemon is uh, is our Terra Captain, meaning it could Terrastalize. It's the only Pokemon on our roster that could Terrastalize. Meaning, um, <laughs> I'm sorry if you don't know what Terrastalization is, but it's a mechanic where you could change your Pokemon's typing. So as you can see, my Terra Captain, my signature Pokemon, is going to be Escavalier. 
which is normally a steel and bug type Pokemon, meaning it's four times weak to fire. I could Terrastalize to any type I want. For example, I could Terast I could turn my Escavalier into a uh, fire or dragon type if I want to, and take away that big, big, big four times fire weakness. For example, so um, yeah, I'll be. You could change it to any typing. So one week, for example, week one, I'm going to be turning it into a dragon type. But yeah, I could bring a dragon type Escavalier week one, and then maybe a, a ground type in week two. So keep your eye out for that. It's an interesting mechanic. It's really dope. Um, the rest stays the same. Signature Pokemon needs to be brought to each and every match. Uh, the signature Pokemon could only be C tier or lower. Escavalier is a C tier, but your signature could be a lower tier, like Obama Snow, which is D tier. Obama Snow actually kicked ass from what I could see last season. So, um, and the signature Pokemon is drafted in the first round of the draft. So, yeah, those are pretty much the rules. Uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. If I am, I'll explain it later. But those are. What you need to know going forward, so. Yeah. Shortly, I will introduce my team. And I will go over my week one uh, matchup. And I will also, before all that, I will show you the schedule momentarily. So. Once again, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you, the viewer, for tuning in. And thank you, the admin team. Once again, Trinell, Brad, Gil, and Layton. You guys are fucking monsters man i'm very happy to be back i regret not being with you guys last season but here i am now so let's go all right let's see if i could do this very quickly i have some notes right here this right here is my team post draft like before week one so this is what i drafted um as you can see i have the round they were drafted in as well as the overall pick they went in the whole draft so uh, once again, in the very first draft, we had to do our signature Pokemon. The only Pokemon that could terrestrialize. And um, it had to be C tier or below, and it has to come to every game. So, first overall, we got a Scavalier as our captain. Uh, second overall pick out of 16 players in a snake draft. Um, I had second, which I actually would have preferred being late in the draft. You know, so... Um, Regardless, I was going to pick Escavalier. I think I'm not out of 45 players in all divisions. I'm pretty sure I'm the only Escavalier player. But yeah, my Escavalier is the only Pokemon that could Terrastalize. We could Terra and get away from that crucial, that big four times weakness of the fire. Escavalier has a, I believe, a 135 base attack. It's my primary physical breaker. And, um,. It makes for a superb Spadef pivot since it likes to run Assault Fest most weeks. Uh, second overall, I picked Zero Aura. I normally don't value electric types that much. I mean, you always need a draft electric type, but I really want a Zero Aura. First time ever owning it. As you will see in this draft, half of it are Pokemon I used before, um, but half of it's brand new Pokemon. This is my 15th draft league season overall and half of these pokemon i still haven't used before so i finally finally got my hands on zero aura and um it just gives me a lightning fast pokemon a lightning fast volt switch pivot base speed 143 i believe and um a lot of these pokemon i wanted them to be able i wanted them to be potentially mixed attackers Meaning, um, one week Zero Aura could be physical, one week it could be special, or it could be both. So Zero Aura could definitely do that. Plus, it has Volt, Volt Absorb, meaning it's able to, it's electric immunity, being able to protect Primarina and my flying types. I have a, quite a few Pokemon weak to electric, so it was very important for me to get electric immunity on this team. Next up, we have Nettle King. Um, I got my electric type in round two and I wanted my ground type early on This was actually Supposed to be mammoth swine early on 
But the thing is, um, it's just my opinion here. I know Gil um, disagrees with me here. But what I find is, at least in that deck's draft, it's harder to find quality special attackers. Yeah, I have a harder time getting special attackers on my teams. So I reached for Nettle King. Um, you know, like, I'm looking at post-draft, like the free agency. I see a lot more physical attackers. Like, if I wanted to, I could just pick up some something like Machamp or Golurk if I wanted to. But I want Nettle King. You know, um, I haven't done good with Nettle King in the past. But I really, really, really wanted that Sheriff Force Life Orb special attacker. So... Um, it's my, it's a primary special attack breaker for my team, a grounded poison type, meaning I could, uh, lay up T-spikes, and, um, it was my first rocker. Even though Nettle King doesn't want to click stealth rock, it can if I need it to, so. It's a poison type, meaning I could resist and, um, destroy fairies, so. I'll give a little spoiler, this draft was very inspired by um hassan you know hassan from my last season of ngc ngc season 11 he had a team of zero aura um so Valley, and komo'o and i was planning to get those same three pokemon right i wanted komo'o as my dragon type so i wanted everything that could resist fairy so escavalier was a good signature for me and i got nettle king because of that poison type uh deters Fairy spam. So that's why I went with Nettle King. And um, I got Nettle King because I believed I was still going to go after Kamo. So going forward, we got Primarina with our fourth. I know it was kind of a reach, but I love Primarina. We won with it. My only draft league I won, um, Primarina was a key component to that team. So Primarina gives me another primary special breaker. And. Um, also a very slow pivot, a very slow pivot with uh, flip turn and very high speed F. So I like that base 60 flip turn. I believe base 60. So next up we have another new Pokemon. I've been wanting Silvalli for a while. I know it's not the strongest Pokemon, but I like versatility. Once again, I wanted mixed attack uh, potential on my team. So it gives me my very first defogger on the team and it gives me a mid speed pivot with both U-turn and parting shot. And it also gives me a second Pokemon that I could uh, switch types. You know, Escavalier could Terrastalize to any type. And Silvalli could turn into any type with this um, ability. So, yeah. Yeah. It gives me a lot of variety. It makes it tougher for my opponents to, uh, you know, prepare for my team. So, next up, we follow the same trend with another mixed attacker in Swallow. Um, Swallow... Gives me a very fast pivot. I have zero aura at base 143 and nothing close to that base speed. So Swallow is underneath that at base speed 125. Gives me a very fast pivot and another mixed attacker. You know, we could go physical with Guts Facade or we could go special with um, Specs Boom Burst. So yeah, another mixed attacker. I'm a big fan. Next up, this is a big reach, but I love my stacking. Especially an E tier. I was looking at all the E tier Pokemon, and most of them are trash. Most of the times, your E tier won't come to games, but Stacking's gonna come to games, guys. I've won with it. I know what it could do. Um, I love Stacking, and I loved Escavalier back when Pursuit was allowed. If Pursuit was still allowed, those two mons would be monsters. I would use them so much more. But I still love my Stacking, base speed 100. Uh, base speed, one, base attack 160, I believe. Um, I think it was the best E tier possible. And no one was looking to draft their E tier yet. So I wanted to reach and just get that out of the way, you know. I felt if I didn't get stacking, then um, once another one of, the, one of the 16 coaches wanted to get their E tier, I think it would be one of the first to go, along with like Pokemon like Girder. Um, there's some other E tiers out there that are really good, but I felt Stack King was my favorite out of all of them. I just love that Stab Giga Impact, you know. It will punish um, any switch-ins, 
you switch in you want you switch out into something you're probably losing them on you're probably losing them on um next up i get a lot of flack for this uh pick but we got claydol we got claydol i've used it before it actually um oh it, yeah i've used it before i've done good with it before it gives me a second stealth rocker and it gives me a rapid spinner and a teleport pivot by the way at this point on the draft i i did have defog i did have hazard removal but i only had nettle king as a stealth rocker which was a big no-no once again i'm not going to put rocks on my nettle king um so this pick you know it could have been better but i wanted um like roll compression if that makes sense in claydol i get rocks i get rapid spin I get electric immunity, I get uh, ground immunity, I get four very um, important aspects in one Pokemon, so I'm cool with it, you know? And if it doesn't do good for me, so what, I drop it for something later. But I like Claydol. I like Claydol. I compress so many rolls into one Pokemon. Let's go. <laughs> Next up we have Articuno, it gives me yet another Defogger. And um, let me see here. More importantly, I get a great Spadef wall, a Spadef pivot, with key moves like Roost, Heal Bell, and U-Turn. So I get my, I get my first and only Heal Bell, Heal Bell Pokemon. So I like Articuno. I've used it before. I I've used it before. Um, next up we have Scrafty. At this point in the draft, I realize I don't have a Dark type and I don't have a Fighting type. So. I got, I took care of both of those in one Pokemon. So Scrafty gives me both. It gives me bulky offense. Um, most of my team, early on in the draft, they're offensive. I have an offensive team, but they're quite frail. I have Pokemon that they could kick ass, but they can't take a hit. You know, Nettle King dies to a hit. Swallow dies to a hit. So I want something that could hit something, but also take a hit or two, or three, so. Uh, Scrafty's good. Scrafty's good. It's useful. And really, three great abilities. Um, Moxie, Intimidate, and Shed Skin. So, yeah. Another Pokemon I'm new to, but I've seen it drafted in my draft league quite a few times. Uh, shout out to the Prince Aldo. <laughs> and last but not least, Latios, dude. Um, I was going to get Kamo. -O. I noticed I'm like one of the only... I'm one of two people who, haven't, who had a free S-tier slot. So I could wait. I wanted a high tier dragon. This was supposed to be Kamo. But the thing was, um, I want a Latios, you know, it could roost. It could be a breaker, it could call mine. It could be set up, it could be a uh, immediate breaker. It could be so many things. It gives me defog, it gives me recovery and roost. Um, yeah. If I knew I was going to get Latios instead of Kamo, I think I would have got Mammoth Swine instead of Nettle King, but it is what it is. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy with that development. So, yeah, we picked Latios. I just wanted a top tier dragon. Um, let me see what else I have here. It could also be physical with Dragon Dance, too. So, and last but not least, it's 110 base speed. So, I love my speed tiers. This smooth out my speed tier is so good, man. We had 143 with Zero Aura, 125 with Swallow, and then 110 with Latios, and then next up I think is stacking out at 100. Um, I made a big, big, big point to look at my speed tiers while drafting, and I think we killed it in that regard. So that is my team. That is my team. Uh, yeah, this was quite a long breakdown, but... I'm happy with the team. It's not perfect, but to me, I love it. I love it. The power rankings disagree, but I love it personally. I, I think I could put in work. It fits my playstyle. Um, yeah, I don't know what I would change from it. So I'm actually after week one or week two, I'm gonna gander, take a gander at the free agency. So um, before I go to the team builder screen. I want to ask you guys the question of the day, or literally the question of the week, but um, what is your least favorite Pokemon?
from my roster. Tell me down in the comments below if you have an opinion. Tell me what Pokemon you don't like. If this was your team, what is the first drop? <laughs> what is the first drop? I'm curious to know. So let me know down below if you have an opinion. And um, once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, let's get it. Okay, here is my schedule for Season 8 here. Um, I have confirmed we do 8 matchups going into the playoffs. So, yeah, I'm going to have to win a few of these. <laughs> Quite a few of these. Um, there are 16 coaches in our division once again. But I only face 8 of them. So, yeah. From what I understand, the top 7 records... The top 7 records of the 16 coaches make the playoffs. So... I'm going to have to work hard. I'm going to have to rack up some W's. So I'm really going to have to put in some effort. Once again, I haven't played singles for like half a year. So we're going to have to shake off Rust immediately. We can't be taking silly L's. You know, so. Um, I have not been in the PWC for a year. We have finally won a draft league since then. So I would love to think, I would hope to think that I'm quite better than... My last, uh, my last season here. So, anyways, I will quickly introduce my matchups. Um, at least the coaches for week one. Our opening, our home opener, we faced the New York Not to a big time New York Mets fan. By the way, we have some baseball fans here, um, a couple of them. But yeah, um, New York Not to coached by Blackout EDC. After the slide, I will show you the matchup for week one. Uh, followed by that, we have week two, the Distortion World Deuce. Uh, probably the coolest logo. Cool, coolest logo, in my opinion, of this division. Um, coached by Panda Redness. Week three, we have Blank. I think their team's really called Blank. And they are coached by Red X. Off the top of my head, it's a... It's a massive rain team so um by the way most of these coaches are new to the pwc as a whole i do not know most of them i have not seen them play um most of them are new to the pwc they have not been here before um the first three weeks um first three matchups first three coaches they haven't played in the pwc before now in week four, we have the Winnipeg Dragapults coached by coach Yasha Indigo. I believe from what I have here, he played last season. He debuted last season. Um, so he played season seven and eight. So yeah, we have Yasha Indigo. Week five, we have Alaska Articuno coached by Galactic Empire. Um, what I have here is he played back in season four. Took a long time off. But now he's back, so he played season four and eight. Next up, um, for week six, I believe, um, the only player here out of these eight matchups, this is the only player I've played before. Only player I know I semi seen before. The Paralyzed Florges, he used to go by, I believe, the Arkansas Arachnids. We played him back in season five. Um, Coach Nickinator. He is a youngster. He is really good. He is really good. He, I probably have my sights set on him the most, <laughs> to be honest. But he's the only one I've ever played before. We played back in season five. I forgot what week, but guys, it was a, <laughs> it was an 82, 82 turn victory for us. Um, the last 20 turns, I only had Articuno left. Like he was winning. It should have been his game. And we turned that bitch back. We turned it back. We walled him with Articuno. It was wild. I'm actually going to... I'm going to link the video to that episode if you guys want to see it. That will be in this description to this video as well. But yeah, Coach Nick, um, he he is really good, man. I'm, I'm really impressed by him. Uh, I'm scared of him. <laughs> I'm scared of him. I'm also scared of Week 7, uh, Admin Gill. His team is called... I might butcher this, but FC Victini Pilsen, I think Pilsen. Um, yeah, Admin Gill 
Well, first off, Nick, um, he played, Nick has played se um, season 5, 6, 7, and 8. Gil has played every season since season 4. If not earlier, but I have him season 4 through 8. So, um, yeah. I'm very, very cautious about both Nick and Gil. And last but not least, we finish our season week 8 against the Glencoe Gudras. And Coach Froggerman225, um, he's another newbie. But Coach Froggerman, also a Braves fan, I believe. So a couple of baseball fans, which is really dope. And uh, we finished our season off against the Glencoe Gudras. So those are the coaches. From what I recall, half of them haven't been in the PWC before. And the only coach I've played against was Nickinator, so this is a grab bag. This is a grab bag full of surprises here. I don't know how these coaches play. I know their rosters as of today, but I don't know their play styles. I haven't played against them, so that's all I have. I just want I wanted to show you guys my schedule, and uh, let's hope for the best here. In a moment, I will go to my week one matchup against the New York Natu. Let's get it. And now for my opponent. This is my week one opponent, um, Coach Blackout EDC, and his team is called the New York Natu. Funny thing is, today he's actually going to go watch the Houston Astros play my Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. So that's pretty hype. Go Angels. Um, but that's pretty hype. Big baseball fan here. Um, um, happy for him. He's going to go see that game. But anyways, for his team, we have a pretty... I was actually pretty intimidated looking at his team on paper. It was kind of hard for me to prep for with the, the tools I have. But I think I kind of figured it out. But I think the biggest threat here... Well, first off, his team. Let me introduce it. The York, New York not to... His captain, Terra Captain, is Rhyperior. So Rhyperior is very bulky, at least on the physical side, and has a um, fabulous ability called Solid Rock. But anyways, this Rhyperior could change to any typing, right? And it could eat a hit. It could definitely eat a hit, R2, R3. And I'm predicting this Rhyperior to actually... We'll see if it happens, but I'm expecting it to go Terra Grass, you know? That way you could eat up uh, water moves um, and so forth. So, yeah, I'm expecting Terra Grass, hopefully. And um, we have Rhyperior, and then we have some threats, man. Um, this team's pretty damn offensive, and it has some bulk too, but we have Volcarona, who's very scary, who's always on my draft board. I was looking into drafting it um, somewhat, but he took it very early on. Uh, we have Hisuian Gudra, who's... Once again, this is my first taste of Generation 9 draft. So I haven't played these new Pokemon in singles yet. But Hussein Gudra's um, very bulky. It's a threat. I don't think it's worth an S tier ranking. But yeah, it's kind of a threat. You got to prep for it. It's very bulky um, in general. We have Iron Leaves, who's pretty damn scary. Um, you could put a... A booster energy boost up either the attack or most likely speed and sword dance up and kind of sweep the game from there um, we have a keldeo a porygon z porygon z a glass deer a rotom fan a drapeon um what is this thing called rapidash galarian and a dusclop so yeah some big threats it's pretty damn top heavy and uh i fully expect the first like few pokemon to come and not so much the last pokemon uh, my biggest threats here is going to be the terra riparier and i think the drapeon i think drapeon is actually one of his best pokemon you know it kind of goes ham poison and dark typing is really good against like a lot of my roster and it has the elemental thing so you got fire thing for escavalier you have earthquake uh, you have Dark Stab for Latios. You have Poison Stab for Primarina. Uh, Drapion is fucking scary. So um, <laughs> I'm expecting either for his lead, I'm going to expect the Rhyperior. 
or a drape gun, you know, you can lay up some kind of hazards turn one. And if you're not laying up hazards, you have heavy offensive pressure. So I'm expecting drape gun to lead if it comes. But that is his team, and I will show you what I expect him to bring. So, um, once again, Terra Rhyperior makes sense. I fully expect Volcarona and Iron Leaves to always come. Porygon Z, uh, Gudra Hisuian, and um, the last wild card slot. It should be draped on. I'd be very like uh, shocked if it's not draped on. But in that last wild card slot, I also considered maybe a Scarf Keldeo so you could pivot around. Or a Glass Deer. Glass Deer is actually. A big threat, but I think out of those three Pokemon, the Drake Bell makes the most sense. A uh, Dusclops could come too. Um, yeah, in the power rankings, Dusclops got shitted on, but I, I respect that Pokemon. You know, it's kind of scary. You you have to click knock off on it and maybe toxic it. So I'm not really prepped that much for Dusclops to be honest. So it's kind of scary. I hope that it doesn't come, but out of those Pokemon, I think Drake Bell should be the last. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I expect him to bring. I'm going to bring my Escavalier. It's going to be Terra Dragon, and uh, Terra Dragon is mainly for Volcarona. Um, there's nothing Volcarona could really do to a Dragon type. Dragon typing, especially with the Assault Vest, you resist Fire, you resist Bug, I think. You definitely resist uh, Grass. You know, it might have Giga Drain for Primarina, I figure. And, um, yeah, I think Terra Dragon... Volcarona could go ham, right? It, click, it clicks Quiver Dance and wins games. So I wanted to make sure that doesn't happen to me, you know? So we're going to bring Terra Dragon as Cavalier. Um, that Cavalier is kind of bonkers, this game. It, it's like my main answer for Porygon Z, too, because that thing is a threat. But Porygon Z doesn't do shit um, if I'm not Terra, you know? It, yeah, it's like a five-hit KO your best move so um we have a choice band zero aura kind of goes ham it okos um it could oko stuff it could oko gudra it okos iron leaves if it's not booster energy it, it, it goes ham we have a, a specs pre marina it's going to be my lead it's going to be my lead um it's very bulky it's actually very bulky uh drapeon should never oko it if he leaves Drapion, I'm probably just going to be... Not the wisest move, right? Not the wisest move, but I'm going to click Moonblast on it. You should never kill me. You know. I'm expecting Drapion to be Shook a Berry. Because you have to worry about Nettle King. But if you're Life Orb... Dude, if you're Life Orb... If you're Life Orb Jolly, you never Oko me. If you're Adamant Life Orb, you have only a 50% chance to Oko. But the thing is... When I'm prepping for this team, uh, I notice he should always be jolly. He shouldn't be adamant. If you're adamant, dude, you're pretty much going down to Nettle King. You're being outsped by Nettle King and getting O code if you're not Shooka Berry, that is. So, yeah, that's my justification to why I believe um, adamant life orb never comes, right? <laughs> it should always be jolly. Um, we have stacking. I think Slacking's pretty good this week. Uh, with Giga Impact, if you Terra your Rhyperior into Grass or something, we're doing 86% to you. So we could take you out. I don't care how physically bulky Rhyperior is, we could take that thing out. Um, Giga Impact also Oko's max HP Glass Tier. And we have, um, we have stuff like Earthquake and uh, Hammer Arm Oko's Gudra. Sucker Punch Oko's Iron Leaves. It really goes ham. I don't care about his shitty ability. It goes ham this week. So, And it's needed for, like I said, um, Terra, Terra Rhyperior and uh, Glastier. It's actually my Glastier answer. So, um, Scrafty kind of wins. Scrafty kind of wins. My game plan here is to take out his physical attackers. We need to take out the Iron Leaves, the Drapion, the Rhyperior. If those physical threats are gone, Rhyperior just goes in spamming Drain Punch. That's all I have to say about my game plan. Um, 
And we have Latios as my wild card Pokemon. I had a tough time building for this team, and I didn't know what my last Pokemon should be. And out of all my options, I think Latios should come. I couldn't justify anything else here. Um, so we're bringing Latios. My two question marks here are Latios and Primarina. I actually think they're not the best to bring this matchup, but um, I'm going to bring them. And they're most likely, those two are going to be my leads. Because if I lose them like turn one, turn two, it's not game over for me, you know, so... My leads either going to be Latios or most likely Primarina. Like I said, I have bulk on Primarina. We we could take that Life Orb, um, Poison Jab, and Okoye back. So, yeah, that's kind of my game plan. I feel I got gave you guys the gist of my team. So, anyways, that's our home opener, man. Um, yeah, once again, go Angels. <laughs> uh, he should be, my opponent should be at this Houston Astros game. Uh, today and we should battle be battling tomorrow after work so that's all i have for you let's battle on um yeah hype pwc hype here we go another season of draft league it's been a long time playing single uh since we last played singles but i'm back man i'm back enough vgc <laughs> um see you guys in a moment all righty guys i'm back our season eight debut for the PWC Pokemon World Circuit is your boy Corrupt, and um, this is my battle against Typical Chuck, um, AKA Blackout EDC, the coach of the New York Noctu. So, shout out to him. Like I said the other day, he saw he went to Houston, Texas, got to see the Astros kill my Angels, but it is what it is. I'm still going to represent. The Angels got them back in the very next day, so. Um, yeah <laughs> anyways here's our week one matchup for once again this is my first singles of gen 9 ever my first singles um draft league in like seven months and my first time being back in the pwc in like i think over a year now so we are back um our boy blackout edc is actually making his um PWC debut into the league right here. So anyways, um, you guys, for anyone who's seen my content before from the PWC, I believe I've always done live commentary, but as of like the past year in all my draft leagues, I, for the regular season, I do post game commentary. So I'll play the replay and I speak about what, um, I give you some comments on the game and then if when if we make playoffs that's when I actually do live commentary like I used to do for my videos so I just want to throw that out there for anyone who's viewed me before but anyways here's our matchup and I pretty much predicted his team the only difference here is um that I thought Iron Leaves would be here, like a Speed Booster, Sword Dance, Iron Leaves. I was pretty concerned about it. I was pretty scared about it, rightfully so. And I thought his six Pokemon would either be Keldeo, Drapion, or Glastier. But not both Glastier and Drapion. I believe he dropped the Iron Leaves for Glastier here. Um, pretty scary, man. Um, I respect the uh, Glastier here. And you'll see why he brought it, so... Anyways, our week one matchup right here. Um, I'm going to lead my Primarina. As I said in Team Builder, his two hazard setters are um, Stealth, Rock, Stealth Rock with Riparia and T-Spikes with Drapion. So I'm going to lead Primarina. He can lay up his hazards. I don't really care. I usually don't care about hazards very much on my roster. Um... You lay up your cute little hazards. I'm going to hit you with a Specs Moonblast. So. And Moonblast over Scald because Moonblast kills Drapion. And then I expect Rhyperior to um, always Terrastalize in front of Primarina, right? You would figure it won't stay quad weak to uh, water. So here we go. Here's the matchup. There we go. But anyways, we have... Primarina lead. He, instead of laying up T-Spikes like I thought he would, 
Like, I thought Drapion would expect me to switch out, but he switches out, and I launch off a Specs Moonblast, you know, to exert offensive pressure on the Drapion, any Hazard Setter. But he switches into Gudra, which eats my uh, Specs Moonblast quite well, so, um, yeah, it's pretty wild. Anyways, it's going to meet, eat this Moonblast, and then I switch out. I'm expecting this Gudra to be special attack based, but he actually hits me with the physical heavy slam. So um, props to him. Um, good chunk to my Scrap D. He goes Volcarona, which I love to see. So I knock off to punish, uh, um, to knock off Gudra's item art. Anyways, he goes Quiver Dance here. And I love, I love that he brought in Volcarona on my Scrap D. This is why we have Scrap D. Allowing me to land rock slide and knock it out so there we go first kill of the season goes to scrafty here very hype very hype to see this this is going according to plan so anyways he goes right period i would normally i value scrafty this matchup very much for his special attackers but before i pull out i want to knock off i don't know what right is going to do i don't know his terror type i don't know his item in case he's like a salt vest right period i want to knock it off so that's what we end up doing I click knock off. He's Terra Flying, not Terra Grass. I don't know what the Terra Flying's for, but whatever. We knock off Lefty, so he's not Assault Vest. My Scrafty's almost dead. I'm like, oh, hell no. I'm going to need a Scrafty for later for, um, well, maybe not. I switch into Latios, um, Earthquake Immunity, right? And um, we just stay in. We stay in. We do exchange for like a few turns. I spam Mystical Fire, predicting him to switch out. Um, just do 20% damage. He's going to start spamming the rock slide, and I think he lands each and every rock slide. He actually gets up rocks first, but then we stay in. We do this exchange for like four turns. I spam Mystical Fire over and over. He does rock slide, and I believe I eventually go for Psychic, wanting to knock it out. He survives. He does another rock slide, and I could roost here, but I decide I just want... I do roost, actually. He does rock slide. And um, what I could have done is keep roosting and hope for a rock slide miss. But I just want to get rid of right parrier, you know. My game plan from the get-go was to always knock out physical attackers. That was my priority. So Pokemon like AV um, Escavalier and AV Scrafty could eat. That's my task. That's my um, game plan here. Let me see here. Um... But yeah, we stay in. We do the. I finally knock him out. I could have roosted here. Here comes Porygon Z, and um, I go Mystical Fire and lowering his special attack. It doesn't really matter. Um, a main reason for Escavalier this turn for this game, excuse me, is for Porygon Z. I was very scared of Porygon Z. Um, we go Escavalier immediately. So check this out. What happens here? Um, I switch into Escavalier immediately to check the Porygon Z and he surprisingly throws a curveball he throws a New York Mets curveball at me and he clicks Trick Room in front of my Escavalier mind you which is quite uh, head scratching to me he didn't expect me to go Escavalier so um yeah <laughs> I thank him I thank him for this um and Escavalier my signature my team captain um he starts to eat he starts to eat man um we're under trick room we're base speed 20 man we're not out speeding anything but now we are under trick room that i didn't lay up so here we go uh knock off escavalier our captain's first kill of the season we knock off we close combat we have close combat for this thing second kill right there thank you trick room um he goes we're already, he's already down. We have six Pokemon to his three. He goes Glass Deer, which he, this is what the Trick Room was for, by the way. Um, so anyways, he goes Glass Deer. And at this point, he still has Porygon Z, right? So I want to keep this Escavalier healthy. Escavalier at full health. Um, Porygon Z. Porygon Z needs to hit it like five times to kill Escavalier. So anyways, um, I decide to save my Escavalier, um, part of my game plan, right? So I decide I want to sack off a Pokemon. What don't I need? And I actually didn't like Latios this matchup at all, so um, that's my sack. We go into Latios, I believe. Um, yeah, I go into Latios as my sack. He ends up going 
Drapion. Okay. So I let him I let him knock my Latios out. And then we go back to our lead matchup where the season began. Our turn one matchup, Primarina versus Drapion, right? And I take rocks damage, so um yeah, I don't know his item quite yet. So living a poison jab is kind of risky. I decided to go Vegas here and uh, just go with the flow, see what happens. And um, instead of P jabbing, he actually goes for agility, agility, which I respect very, very much. And um, agility, Drapion is so scary on, on my team uh, against my team, right? He goes agility. Um, he could have earthquake, which I believe he did for stuff like Zero Aura, P jab. Uh, Drapion, good coverage, very good Pokemon, I gotta say. Um, anyways, he goes Agility first, right? I go Moonblast, Specs Moonblast, which was supposed to kill. He lives on one, he lives on one, he lives on 1% one HP. He Poison Jabs, I live on one HP. Fucking wild, right? Um, I live on one HP, I get Poison, but we go Moonblast again. Uh, Primarina kills, first kill of the season. But I go down, which is cool, which is actually pretty dope. Um, Primarina goes down. He has two Pokemon left. I have four Pokemon left. He goes Porygon Z. I go Scrafty. I go Scrafty. I want to see... Oh, maybe I survived something, you know? I doubt it. I'm AV. I have Spadef. But Porygon Z needs to be respected. 135 special attack, I believe. Um, I just go... I just throw in Scrafty. See where this goes. Um... And look at this. My slow ass crafty outspeeds the Porygon Z. What to, um, you guys could have guessed it. He was going for Trick Room again as a, um, a Hail Mary play, I guess. Uh, so that's why yeah, I was a little confused. He was confused too. He hit me up after the game and he was like, oh, I didn't expect Porygon Z to be outsped by Scrafty. I was Trick Room. And, um, yeah, that's my only explanation. He was going for Trick Room there, so... He has one Pokemon left. I have Scrafty, who recovered health thanks to Drain Punch. I Drain Punch, I get a crit, doesn't really matter. And, um, we're just chipping down Glass Deer. He goes Icicle Spear. It turns out he was loaded dice. Which is cool. Um, I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, I knew loaded dice was a thing, but... i never seen loaded dice Icicle Spear before on last year but anyways he gets chilling nay and um at this point you know he's at 14 percent health last year is slow as fuck um i just say oh who do i want to give the kill to i could have gave it to our kill leader shout out to escavalier for the two kills so far um big shout out but anyways i'm like um uh, let's just give it to stacking you know i love my stacking uh, a lot of people in Draft League don't respect it because of the true inability. I love stacking, especially as a cheap, cheap, cheap E tier. So we just want to give them a cheap little kill and secure our, our week one victory. So that is the game. 3-0 victory. It's very comfortable. It's very comfortable. At one point, we were up 6-3. So um, yeah, went down according to plan. It actually went better than I expected, man. Uh, I liked my game plan, but I didn't expect it to be 3-0. Uh, yeah, he kind of did himself in by giving me Trick Room in front of Ascavalier, in my opinion. So, anyways, big shout out to Blackout EDC. I don't know if his name's really Chuck, Chuck but um, yeah, that's our week one victory. We um, Welcome to the league, by the way, my friend. Welcome to the league. Next week, I believe we... Uh, we play another PWC rookie. Uh, the Panda of Redness is the coach of the Distortion World Doofs. We saw um, Chuck's logo, and we go into a team with a better logo. I vote this team as the best logo in our division. Maybe the whole league, shit. There's a lot of good logos, a lot of good designers out there, so... Um, but this is my favorite. Yo, yo, you guys will see in the team builder next week. But that's our PWC de season debut. So, um, big shout out, man. Big shout out to the Escavalier. Once again, two kills. Uh, Scrafty with the two kills. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Uh, landing rock slide. 
on the quiver dance and um who else pre marina got a kill and stacking got a cheeky kill at the end so before i sneeze i'm gonna let you guys go please drop a like and once again the question of the week what is your least favorite member of this roster so um let me know who you would drop anyways thank you guys for viewing drop a like for both me and our boy blackout edc and i'll see you guys next week